Vaccines have been one of the most contentious and divisive issues in history, not just in America, but across the world. There's been some very extreme actions taken by governments to impose things like vaccine mandates. We know there's been suspicions and doubts about the efficacy of these vaccines from day one. What we didn't know is that there were doubts by the inner sanctum responsible for these vaccines from day one. That's right, Brendan. There's more and more information coming out in drips and leaks showing that what was previously dismissed as a conspiracy theory or a host of conspiracy theories was in fact the case. Let's look at the details. I'm Brendan Fallon. And I'm Lee Smith. And, and we're, we're over, over the, the target. target. We've had Deborah Burks, who was the White House Coronavirus Response Coordinator. She was in Congress on June 23rd, and she was giving what was, I guess, actually a, a lack of explanation mm. for the messaging about the vaccines being able to, to give people immunity to mm. coronavirus. I think we can have a look at a little bit of that hearing. When the government told us that the vaccine couldn't transmit it, was that a lie or was that a guess? Or is it the same answer? I think it was hope that the vaccine would work in that way. And that's why I think scientists and public health leaders always have to be at the so, table, so being it, very clear what we know and what but we this, don't this know. Is in, this is important for the country to know. So when I asked the question, when the government told us that the vaccinated couldn't get it, and I asked you if it was a guess or a lie, you said you don't know. You said you think it was hope. So what we do know is it wasn't the truth. So they were either guessing, lying, or hoping, and communicating that information to the, to the, to the citizens of this country. So hope, Lee. Hmm. Well, there's, there's been some very inspiring songs about hope in, in recent decades. He's got high hopes. He's got high in the sky. Apple cry hope. Yes, Brendan, it's an inspiring subject for songs. However, it should not be... Um, it should not be standard operating procedure for the way public health officials act. We could manage to muster some sympathy for the coronavirus uh, response team, Deborah Burks, Anthony Fauci, and the rest, if they hadn't stirred up such, first of all, on one end, stirred up such an insane frenzy about it, right? That was the idea about hope. We're responding to the frenzy that we created here. Everything from the way that we're going to count COVID-19 cases, right, which was um, extremely flexible and extremely large, and the way that we're going to count coronavirus deaths, meaning anyone who died with coronavirus, not from it, right, not exclusively from it, but anyone who died with coronavirus. You mentioned the data there, Lee, and I know that yeah. in terms of the hospitalizations, at one point, um, anything, like if anyone, someone came into hospital with having a schizophrenia episode, mm. if they had coronavirus, right. they'd be notched up as a, as a coronavirus admission. Right. So this is what understandably inflated the number mm -hmm. of reported infections of coronavirus at that time and yeah. whipping up this frenzy that you mentioned. It's a, a tragic moment in w not just American history, in the history of the world. And... Um, Obviously, there are two main reasons for this. One was a political reason. Uh, it had to do with getting Donald Trump out of office here in the United States. It had to do also, the other political reason was it served as great advantage to the Chinese Communist Party. These were two different things. And then we have to acknowledge there was a huge financial play going on here, and that was about the vaccine manufacturers. So it's an insane moment in American history. And you can see why people will be recovering from this, not from COVID-19, but from the COVID response for many, many years to come, right? Because what happened here was, it's not just about the economy uh, being shut down and economies around the world being destroyed. It's not just about people being fired from their jobs. It's not just about, uh, it's not just about you or me, get, our plane trips getting canceled, our vacations getting delayed because of how the airlines responded to the vaccine mandates, right? It's, it's an enormous thing that affected gl global culture. You mentioned there about the potential influence of the pharmaceutical companies. Yeah. And I think this raises the question of what were the motives behind why they pushed this so hard? Even if they didn't, not considering people's yeah. safety, it's, it's a, you would think it would be a dangerous political move. Presumably, you know, it's gonna come out as it is now, this yeah. information's gonna come out. It's not gonna put them in a positive light, you know, in, in terms of right. elections and things like that. So why were they prepared to do this? I mean, the reason you mentioned the, the influence of pharmaceutical companies is one consideration. 
Uh, perhaps a, a scarier consideration mm. is that they, they just don't care and that they have the expectation yeah. it will come out, but people will just forget. You know, the media will cover it up. That's right. And I, um, yeah. they'll, they'll be the next distraction, yeah. like I, uh, Jan 6, perhaps. Exactly. They, they, they learned over the last five years, starting with Russiagate, saying that Donald Trump is a Russian spy. They knew that they control the media. They can get the media to do whatever they want. They control social media. They can control Twitter and Facebook and whatever else is on social media. And remember, Brenda, if we're scanning uh, network news or the prestige press, New York Times and Washington Post, they're not talking about what Deborah Burke said when she said, yeah, it was all about hope. They're skipping over this, right? So people who are not watching um, or reading Epoch Times, they don't know about this story. People who are relying on CNN or CBS or, or the Washington Post, they're not getting it. So this is what I mean by that this information is coming out in, in drips and leaks, right? At a certain point, at a certain point, we'd like to see it come out all as a flood so we can understand better what happened. It's not just to say, gotcha, the Democrats were lying or Deborah Burks is a liar or Anthony Fauci is a bad guy. We're looking down the road as well. We're looking down the road to, uh, uh, you know, to another public health crisis. We're looking down the road t toward our own society, which has been badly, badly hurt by COVID-19 response. Right. It wasn't just the coronavirus. It was the response. And when you hear Deborah Burke saying, yeah, they were acting out of hope. And that's what the vaccines were about. She says that there were results coming through from South Africa at that time. Um, we can we can listen to this clip for a little bit, yeah. which gives her gives us an idea of the information that they did have. But they apparently didn't consult or didn't reference. I can tell you as a family member who had individuals that were susceptible, of course we got everybody vaccinated, but we still use layered protection during surges because I knew potentially the vaccine immunity would wane like natural immunity waned. And there was evidence that every four months reinfection was occurring in South Africa. So the fact that she had her own family using layered protection, I assume things like masks, mm -hmm. well, that gives you an indication of, of her own faith in the vaccine. And I think this comes back to the whole issue of, of safety. It's not, it's not just about holding these people accountable for giving, giving out false information. Right. It's the fact that they endangered people's lives. And also we see this on a global context as well, that the lack of proper investigation, the lack of proper information, mm -hmm. it's preventing people from actually understanding this virus properly. The, the fact that yeah. there hasn't been a, a genuine investigation into what happened into a potential Wuhan lab leak. Excellent point, Brendan. We saw actually, this, this is another uh, something, uh, more of the drips and leaks, more from the drips and leaks front. We saw a report in the UK's Daily Mail uh, a week and a half ago saying how Tedros Ghebreyesus, the head of the World Health Organization, has told Western officials that the origins of COVID-19, it's not of natural origin, but it started with a catastrophic accident in the lab at Wuhan. So again, this was something else that has been dismissed as a conspiracy theory. But here's the head of the World Health Organization letting on that this is really what went on. And again, this is more news that's going to be blocked from the mainstream outlets so that people don't start asking questions, right? This is information that is coming out very, very slowly. But that's exactly right. That's exactly right. The fact that we still don't know these things. This is not only going to keep us from preventing another health crisis or responding um, most appropriately to another health crisis, but it has uh, it has entirely v eliminated trust, faith in the public health health system. How can you believe these people anymore? The viciousness with which they imposed mandates on people, on Americans, and this happened around the world as well, mandating a treatment that they knew did not work. Well, once this news does start to get out, once it does become broader and wider, what faith will people have in their public health officials? I, I mean, they might as well be witch doctors dancing around a fire and, 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 and invoking different spells and pouring potions over one, an, uh, over one another. This makes no sense. This, this could be the next revelation, Lee. This, could, this is, this is yeah. what we could be seeing coming out next. Right, that's what was going on in the Pfizer and Moderna laboratories. People dancing around in witch hats, chanting that these things may work. We hope they may work. This is what it is. 
Dr. Burks. That this is what it is. It's an incantation. Hope is an incantation. It wasn't. What? It's not data. It wasn't statistics. It wasn't certainty. And that's why, of course, vaccines normally they're tested for many, many years before they're sent into the market. So here's a big question for us, Brendan. It's a very scary question, right? Now that we're starting to get some sort of sense of the things that they lied to us about, that they dismissed as conspiracy theories, what else are they lying about? What else don't we know about? If you're watching this episode of Over the Target on YouTube and you want to see the full version, you can find us on Epoch TV. Watch us exclusively on Epoch TV where you'll find Over the Target and all your other favorite Epoch TV shows.